Hi, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson is on solving inequalities using addition or subtraction. Our objective today is just that. We will solve inequalities using addition or subtraction. The question I'd like you thinking about as we proceed through the lesson is how can you use what you already know about solving an equation to solve an inequality? So to solve an inequality algebraically, we're going to use properties of inequality. So when we learned to solve equations, we learned properties of equality, and now we're gonna use properties of inequality. So to use these properties, we're gonna create equivalent inequalities to keep the equality. Addition property of inequality states that when you add the same number to each side of an inequality, the inequality remains the same, creating an equivalent inequality. So even though we're dealing with an inequality, it's a bit of a tongue twister, we want to do equal to both sides. We need to keep the balance. So even though our equation has changed to an inequality and we've dropped the equal sign and we're gonna have less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, we still need to keep that balance on both sides of the inequality symbol, just as we do in an equation. So addition property of inequality states that if I add the same value to both sides of the inequality, then it produces what we call an equivalent inequality. So a plus c will still be less than b plus c. Noting that this property applies to all inequality symbols. So the inequality symbol does not matter. Property is the same. Whatever you add to one side, you must add to the other. Just like with solving equations, we also have a subtraction property of inequality, which states when you subtract the same number from each side of an inequality, the inequality remains the same, creating an equivalent inequality. So if we have a less than b and we subtract c from the left, we must also subtract c from the right, giving us an equivalent inequality of a subtract c less than b subtract c. So although I'm using algebraic variables here, we're gonna replace these with values. Still noting that the subtraction property of inequality applies to all our inequality symbols. So let's solve an inequality. Our instructions are to solve and to graph the solution. So hopefully you've watched the previous video where we talked about graphing and interpreting graphs of inequality. Today we're gonna to use graphs to represent our solution set. So we have the inequality x subtract six is less than negative two. So just as when we solved equations, we're gonna identify our variable term and what is happening to our variable term. It is being subtracted by six. We want to create a zero pair here so that we're left with just x on the left. So the opposite of negative six is positive six, which means we are going to add six to both sides. So this gives me a zero pair, leaving me x less than, and we add, negative two and six is positive four. Now we still have to do the second part of the problem and graph the solution. So I'm gonna create my number line, and just like when we learned in our previous video, we're going to put just the number four on our number line. We're going to have an open circle because it's less than but not equal to. So remember, open means not equal to. And because our variable's on the left, my arrow ahead is gonna match that less than symbol and go to the left. Remember, this arrow head matches your inequality symbol if your variable term is on the left. So all the values for x have to be less than four. So open, not equal to, and the solution is any value less than four. So our graph represents our entire solution set because there's an infinite amount of solutions that could be true for this inequality. And this is an equivalent inequality to the given inequality, and it also represents our solution set. Let's try one more. So let's solve and graph the, for the solution. So I'm gonna identify, here's my variable term, and it's being added by 17. 
The inverse of add 17 is to subtract 17, which I must do to both sides of the inequality to keep the balance. So now we have x alone and we have a zero pair. So we have to do our math. 11 subtract 17 is negative 6. Bring down your inequality symbol and your variable term. Now I'm always going to flip these because I want to graph with my variable on the left. So if I flip the x and the negative 6, I must also flip the inequality symbol. So I'm going to flip x to the left, reverse the direction of my inequality symbol, and there flip my value to the right. Now I'm going to graph. Here's my number line. I need the value negative 6 on my number line. I'm going to have a closed circle because it can be equal to and it's going to the right because my variables on the left and my greater than. So all the values that are negative 6 and greater are solutions that make this inequality true. So my solution set is negative 6 and any number greater than that, x greater than or equal to negative 6. Now it's your turn. I would like you to pause the video now, solve, graph your solution set, and come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So let's go ahead and do this. We have our variable. It's being subtracted by 9. So to make a zero pair, I'm going to add 9 to both sides of the inequality. So I have my zero pair. I'm left with x greater than and negative 13 add 9 is negative 4. So you bring down your x, bring down your inequality symbol, and negative 4. Now we need to graph our solution. So here's our number line. We need our value negative 4 on our number line. I'm going to have an open circle. Open because it cannot be equal to. It's got to be greater than. Since my variables on the left, my direction of my arrow on my graph is going to match the inequality symbol. So all the values not equal to, but greater than negative 4. Your turn. Please pause the video now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So we're going to identify our variable. We're going to notice that it's being added by 9.1. I need to create a zero pair here. The opposite of add 9.1 is to subtract 9.1. Whatever I do to the one side, I must do to the other. So this is zero. So we're going to bring down our inequality symbol and our variable, and we need to add negative 8.5 and negative 9.1. They have the same sign, so 5 plus 1 is 6, bring down your decimal point, and 8 plus 9 is 17. And it's negative because both values are negative. Bring down your inequality symbol and your x. Now I'm going to flip this to graph it. So I'm going to reverse x and negative 17.6, and because I flipped and reversed those, I must reverse the direction of the inequality symbol. So from greater than, it becomes less than or equal to. Now let's graph. We're going to use a closed circle because it has this equal to. Closed circle and negative 17.6, and our direction of our arrow is to the left because it's less than matches the arrowhead to the inequality. Your turn. Please pause and come back when you're done. Welcome back. Identifying our variable term. It's being subtracted by 3 fourths. The inverse of subtract 3 fourths is to add 3 fourths to both sides. So I have my zero pair here. So I need to get a common denominator. So negative 1 half is going to be negative 2 fourths. So now I have a common denominator of 4. So I'm going to add my numerators. Negative 2 and positive 3 are 1 over a denominator of 4. Bring down your inequality symbol and your x. And now I'm going to reverse this. I'm going to flip it around. x, change the direction of my inequality symbol, is less than 1 fourth. Now I can graph. So I'm going to add 1 fourth to my number line. It's going to be an open circle because it cannot be equal to, and it's going to be all the values less than one-fourth. 
Here's another one for you. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So we are going to identify our variable, understanding that it's being subtracted by 5.9 and the inverse of subtract 5.9 is to add 5.9 to both sides. This is my zero pair, so I need to add. So bring down your x, your inequality symbol, 4 plus 9 is 13. 3, bring down your decimal point and carry the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 5 is 9. My variable's on the left, so let's go ahead and graph. We're going to add 9.3 to our number line. We're going to have a closed circle because it can be equal to and it's going to be all the values to the left of 9.3 and including 9.3 because it's equal to. So there you have it. That's how you solve inequalities using addition or subtraction. I thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. Please subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and leave me a note whether you liked it or not. Hope to see you back soon.